Um, I'm also going to be taking attendance in just a few minutes. I know some people get out of another class, so we'll give it till 6.05 for attendance. Um, Saturday, not this Saturday, next Saturday. So the 23rd, 3 p.m. Okay, so um, do we have any questions? We'll take a look at what we have due this week in addition to our exam. And um, if you have any problems, let's talk about the exam just a little bit. Uh, I have a question, Professor. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yep, go ahead. Uh, do we have class on Thursday? No. Okay. You do not have class next Thursday. Um, after the exam, sometimes we will meet again and start going over some things. But for next week, like I said, I am out of uh, out of touch, so I cannot be available next Thursday. This will be the only Thursday that we will not meet. This will be the only exam that I will not have scheduled for our class time. OK, I know it's difficult. I apologize. It was something that I had planned that um, was bad planning on my husband's part. I'll blame him, of course. So um what else can we say a uh, ton of work to cover tonight um like i said keep up on your reading assignments are due by sunday a question did come up about our group projects everybody should have their groups what i would ask of you this week by wednesday of this week that you let me know if you have not heard from one of your teammates okay because there are, I think, two students that I haven't seen present in class, so I'm not sure if they have dropped the class or what's going on. So is there anybody out there that would like to stay on after class tonight? You can throw it in the chat for me um, to meet up with your group. I'm happy to do that on Zoom tonight. Uh, Lauren, what, what campus are you? Cutler Bay. Cutler Bay, okay, we have a bunch of you, so. Uh, let me take a look and I will add you on to a group, okay? Lauren, where did you go? Oh, there you are. Okay. Remind me at the end of class, okay? And we'll look for a group for you. Um, any questions about the group project? It is due week three. So someone was questioning me on the dates. Uh, week three assignments are going to start Sunday this week and they end... Uh, well, they start Monday for you guys, really, but Monday this week, it'll start week three, and week three ends then the following Sunday. Do we have any questions about anything we did up to this point? So we have until next Sunday to turn it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so, but let me just double check our group project because we have two. Is this the, this is the one where you guys are doing case studies, correct? Yeah. Yes, because mm -hmm. when I click week three under modules, it mm -hmm. says do October 25th. So I was just a little confused. No worries. So October 25th, I'm just pulling up on my phone. So I have a calendar in front of me. October 25th would be the date it's due, but it has to be due by midnight of the 25th. So it's really due, you know, um, 11.59 p.m. Okay. On the 24th. Okay. So I will alter that assignment, um, but just know everyone, all assignments are due Sundays. Okay. okay. So if you ever have a question, your next group project will be a discussion board. And so you're going to have half of it due Wednesday, and then you'll have to respond to everybody by Sunday. So that's the only way something would be due earlier. Make sense? And, and have I confused everybody completely? And then for that, um, how, like how many paragraphs did you want for that paper or could it be like a care plan? No, so no, no. care plans. No, it's gotta be a paper and we'll go over the rubric because it's very clear on the rubric what I expect, okay? Okay. Did everybody find the rubric helpful this week for the professional development? Good, awesome. I, I love it because I tell you guys exactly what I want you to do. And we have decided as a uh, com community group faculty, uh, we're all expecting the same from everybody. Okay, so regardless who your teacher is, we're all following the same rubric. So that makes it a little easier. Um, all right, so we went over that. Like I said, I loved your papers. Thank you very much for sharing. Most of you did a phenomenal job. One of your classmates, I would have given actually a 12 out of nine if I could have 
fabulous paper and I told them that. They wrote about everything. They did it in paragraph form. They used APA format. They gave me references. They did every single thing you could have on the rubric. So unfortunately, I don't give extra credit but for that one student. I would have given you extra credit because you did a fabulous job. So good work um, for you. And most of the rest of you did really well. Most of you guys were averaging an eight out of nine. So that's wonderful. One thing I did notice is we didn't use a lot of APA references, and that was part of the rubric. That was at the bottom. Remember I tell you guys, watch that, because that's a good three points right there. So I was a little more flexible. I will tell you, I was a little flexible in APA format on your papers. So just know that for your next one going forward, that I'm going to expect more of you. Um, and if you have any questions, I had one student out of everyone send me a paper, and I was very appreciative they sent it to me, because then I could tell them what to do. Right. All righty. So we're into the depth of it. We're going to talk about community tonight. I'm going to touch real briefly on the chapters I expected you to read for last week. The reason for that is I want you to focus your studying on the topics that we cover. OK, so we're going to start. I'm going to take attendance real quick because it's 608. And let me just take it real quickly. Do remember, please, attendance is mandatory. Camera's on. It looks like everybody has hers on tonight, and I appreciate that very much, except for one, but um, I'm happy that we all have it on. I know it's a pain, but don't worry. You don't have to put makeup on. I, I don't worry about what you look like. I just need you guys here present in case uh, Dr. Brown joins us. Uh, Claudia, are you here? Can you just say here for me? I see you. Kayla? Here. Kayla, here. here. Awesome. Here. William? Hi. Uh, Luis, I feel like I say it wrong. Am I saying it wrong? Yes, Alisa? I know. It. No, Luis is shaking her head. Yes, I'm saying it wrong. Tell me how to say it again. Luz, Luz. Ah, I'll get it eventually. I promise. Rachel, are you here, Gonzalez? Mm, nope. Uh, Dalen? Here. Thank you. Marissa? Oh, I see you. Here. Great. Thank you. Andrea? No, Andrea. Uh, Larissa? Here. Thank you for reaching out to me this week. I appreciate it. No problem. Sorry for bugging you so much. No, no, you're good. You're good. That's what I'm here for. Don't ever think you're bugging me because you're not. Uh, Christy? Here. Thank you. D'Amber? Here. Oh, you're here. Sorry, I missed you. In the I, I couldn't get to the, the button quick enough. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Lauren, I know I talked to you. I just, yeah, we just spoke about you needing a group. Angela? Here. And we have Greta. Greta? Here. Was that right? Yes. Oh, good. Uh, Rose Angel? Albert. Here. Margarita. Great. Robert. I don't know what's up. Some okay. If anyone knows anyone who's not present tonight and they're Robert friends with might reach out to you. He was sick throwing up earlier. So I know he said that he may not log in. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um I was just about to say, if anyone knows anyone who's not here tonight, please reinforce with them that attendance is mandatory. Dr. Brown will is very, very rigid on that. So um, make sure you guys come and are in person and sort of awake for me. I know at eight o'clock at night. Uh, Felis Felicia, sorry. I'm here. We're trying to get my webcam to work. It's kind of giving us some fuzzy feedback and not working. So we might just end up, um, Tristan might go buy me a new one. Okay, you're fine. Just as long as you're here. Uh, Sharon? Here. Where are you, Sharon? Oh, there you are. Here. I'm here. Thank you. I see you. Thank you. Joseph? Here. Yeah. You go by Joe? I can. It's you fine. Prefer? Doesn't matter. You, you don't care. Okay. No. okay. <laughs> Duana? No. And Hedy? Does anybody know Hedy? No. All right. All right. I don't. I don't know Hetty. This is Luce. I found my unmute button, but um, 
she's actually in my group. So I will reach out to you. Uh, we've sent a couple emails, but no response. Yep. Yep. I'm not surprised by that. Okay. Just keep in touch with me and let me know. Okay. And I can maybe just let's for now, what um, remind me your campus again. I have it written down. I just don't have it. Cuyahoga down. Falls. Oh, so I was going to say if you're Cutler Bay, we would add in uh, Lauren. Lauren. All right. So uh, any questions for our exam next week? I need to tell you, you need to download the exam 48 hours prior. So whenever you are taking it, several of you who have reached out to me are taking it Friday morning. That means by Wednesday morning, I need that exam downloaded. I will send you the Zoom link for who you're joining. You're going to be joining Professor Marvell. Um, and so make sure that's downloaded. If you have any problems, I want to hear from everyone by Thursday morning for any problems. I'm going to ask that you text me because I may not have access to email, okay? By Thursday morning, got it? All right, what you need to have for the exam, and unfortunately we have to do this now because of there was some unethical um, student uh taking of exams and they were not being honest and legit in their taking they were cheating going to one another's houses doing the test together all this quite interesting stuff now what i will tell you about test integrity is this even if you were allowed to cheat on a nursing exam which you're not and i have zero tolerance for cheating but um you're not going to be able to cheat on your NCLEX so why bother is my thought no point. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your money. So what I'm going to tell you for the exam and for proctoring, you need two pieces of technology. You need your computer with the test downloaded on it. You need your cell phone on with Zoom. We will be muting everyone, but we will be watching everyone and we proctor with multiple professors. It is recorded. So there is to be no, my camera is not working, right? Everybody knows what we need to do for that. Is that everybody clear on that? Have you taken tests like this before? Yes. So, yes. yes we ch yep. We changed it as of last quarter. So I assume so. So like I say to you, we'll allow you to have one piece of paper. You can do your math work on that. Five math problems. Know that. To study your calculate with confidence. It's going to be on there. That will be on your NCLEX as well. I can tell you that. Um. What else, what else can we talk about the exam? I'm gonna do a review tomorrow. I will tell you what people have told me, other students is the best thing to do is to attend the review. If anyone wants a review with me one-to-one, -one, I'm happy to do it. Just send me an email or a text and I'm with you on it. I will tell you the information you need to know on that exam is on that study guide. So I have a question, Professor. Is the, is the review recorded? I'm gonna record it. And we're doing recording different this quarter, just so you guys understand why I didn't post last week's lecture. So we're recording it now on MP4 something, something, I don't know. I'm used to Zoom on regular Zoom recording. So it's different. So just give me some leeway. I'm going to, um, I'm really gonna to try to get everything uploaded, but I'm still working on it because I'm pretty tech savvy, but like recording to MP things was like, wait, I haven't even heard of this. So uh, give me a little leeway. I will get those out to you. The recording, I will promise to get out to you by uh, by tomorrow. I I'll t talk with uh, one of the other professors and work on it. Sorry, okay. Professor, for the exam on Saturday, you say like around three, three I mean, on 3 p.m.? Okay, so I am going to proctor myself a 3 p.m. Eastern yeah. Standard Time exam. So if you don't wanna go to another professor, I'm happy to have you guys come to me Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that would be the 20, what is that? The 22nd? 20, 23rd? 23rd, okay. Um, are you gonna send the Zoom link? It'll be our normal Zoom. Oh, normal, okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, but I'll make it, I'll send you guys all an email reminding you of this just so that we see. Okay. End of class tonight, if you have not touched base with me regarding taking the exam and I have a list of students, I expect you to stay on after class tonight and we are going to decide tonight when we are taking the exams. Clear, everybody? Okay, all right. So we're gonna look at quickly, quickly, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and 21. What I will tell you, did anybody notice anything about 
something that pops up in all almost every chapter you read. It's one thing that this book and our class is very, very heavy upon. Did anybody notice a trend with the reading? Interventions, I think it was. Um, Good. Like primary care, secondary care. Mm -hmm. Yep, primary, secondary, tertiary prevention is gonna be huge for us. It will be on every exam you take and it will be all throughout our chapters. We'll talk about that tonight. Next thing that I was hoping you guys picked up on was Healthy People 2020. You guys have an assignment, a group assignment on that. But in addition, this comes up about 17 times in every chapter, okay? This is something that I need you guys to know about. We're gonna spend a little time um, looking at social determinants of health and how healthy people 2020, what that is. What that really did was came into our world and said, this is what we want for the better society to help people out, to do all kinds of objectives and um, really improve life as a community provider. So um, important. We're gonna take a quick look at chapter one's PowerPoint that I sent out to you last week, I believe. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and we're gonna go over that. I'm going to emphasize, so hear me when I emphasize, this is what I want you guys to know out of chapter one. It was really about like what alters public health and how do the economics play a part? How does education play a part, right? And so we wanna talk about, there's two different types of public health nursing that we look at here. So I'm gonna share my screen. And if you guys can't see it, sometimes that happens with me, but I'll share in a second. Um, so that's something interesting. There we go. All right, so everybody should be able to see right here. Um, we looked at chapter one, you did your reading and not a whole lot I want you guys to know other than these two things. We got community-based nursing and we have community-oriented nursing. So when we look at community-based nursing, our focus is gonna be on illness care of the individuals and families across the lifespan. When we look at community-oriented, we're looking at promoting quality of life and the healthcare of the entire community. Um, we're going to look at public health nursing. Our goal with community-oriented nursing is going to be really to prevent disease and promote, restore, and protect health for the community. So when you look at these two things, one is really about the illness care. So the patient's already got something going on. And we look at the growing cost of um, health care, what's happened to it, and things like that. Um, and then we want to look at um, oriented nursing, which is what we do as a more so where we look at helping the community. Well, what can we do to make quality of life a little better, right? What can we do for everybody all around? So these are two kind of definitional um, terms that I really would like you guys to know about. When we look at public health, we know it's a discipline that involves the study of statistics, assessment, uh, epidemiology, which we'll spend a whole chapter on that, okay? What do we benefit? How do we help? Um, what do we do for our patients with our public health? So we increase their life expectancy when we look at what's going on as a community and how we can help that. We help decrease numbers of chronic illness, uh, declines in death rates, and we look at um, approaches that can help keep our communities healthier. Um, our main functions, we talked about this just a tag, just for a second. We look at assessment. We, so when we do this, we're looking at a community. Our first thing, does anybody remember what the first thing you're gonna look at with any community is gonna be? You can shout, I mean, shout it out if you have any, it, you can't be wrong if you give me anything. So um, think about what, what was, what we're, when we're assessing, when we go to a community, the first thing we're gonna do is look at something. We're gonna assess, what are we gonna assess in the community? Would it be the conditions that they're living in? That's part of it, absolutely. Their risk factors, the shared risk factors. Yep, risk factors. What else? Their economical status, as well as their nutritional status. Mm -hmm. Good. So what you guys are describing really is they're all different forms of needs assessment. We assess the community, what are our needs? What do we see in this community? What do they need? Okay, so it's really what we do as a public health nurse. It's really great because in public health, you can touch many, many, many people, you know, when you do community practice. 
So we look at different levels of healthcare. We look at population base, which is gonna be at our base. And then we move upward, preventative uh, primary healthcare. That was one of your definitions from the, um, from your live lectures this week. Um, and we'll look at some of the characteristics of public health. We often reach out and we want to see who will benefit. Sometimes the patients come to us, sometimes we go to them. Um, most of the time in other forms of nursing, they're coming to us because they have something wrong. They need us to fix something, right? But in community health, we tend to go out to them and say, we're here, what can we do for you? So um, really what I want you to know, it comes, we come back to this again at the end of our PowerPoint, know that we have our community oriented nursing, which is gonna be taking care of that community and our community based nursing where we look at illness and things like that. Um, excuse me, chapter one was pretty eh, fluffy if you ask me, some good topics, but I've emphasized to you guys what I want you to know out of the, that chapter, okay? Um, so any questions on chapter one? Yes, can, can you go back to the slide with the um the core functions? Sure. Core function. Yep, right here. Assessment, policy development, and assurance. So what we really will look at all through our entire class is what are we assessing in these communities? What are we going to do for them? How are we going to develop policies that are going to help a community? And what are we going to do? Um, we're gonna follow up and we're gonna see, what do we know about this? We're gonna get really specific with some communities. We're gonna look at vulnerable populations and that's um, an interesting group and that will be a, a project that you will do on your own. Uh, but that's an interesting group because there's several different um, subcategories that are in here and we'll look at that. All right, on chapter two, I'll stop sharing chapter one PowerPoint for you guys, because I know you guys have it. So on chapter two, what we really looked at was the history. Anybody remember when did public health come about? What spurred public health nursing? Was it after uh, World War II? What? World War II. Awesome. Yep. Perfect. So World War II is where we said, whoa, what is going on? Why is it so dirty? Why are people not taking care? So hygiene, public hygiene is going to be what spurred our public health nursing. And that we saw with World War II. Awesome. Do know that that's important. If you were to say, what in the world created the basis for public health? Was it the Great Depression? Was it World War II? Was it whatever? Our answer is always World War II. So from there we go forward. And remember how long ago that was, right? And the hygiene and the conditions that they saw in that world, in that war were just terrific. Um, does anybody have any experience with Florence Nightingale? She's a nursing theorist. Anybody? No, I did some studies um, in a program that their focus was on Nightingale nursing is what it was. And what she focused on was the quality of like Caring. the environment. Right. Go ahead, Larissa. No, I said I. she focused on the culture. She really like, focused on the environment and how taking care, like changing the way people were being treated. And these were patients, you know, she was dealing with illness at the time, but she really saw a difference when she changed that environment. And so that's something that we really see um, going all the way back to World War II. Um, what we know now is, is that our population, which group of people is growing the most right now? The elderly. You the got older it. Population. Yippers. Those baby boomers, right? That's where our group is really, we're really starting to see some impact, right? Because remember, they um, came out of um, wartime, really, and they were... Um, you know, they were a relief for the community. And so uh, having children was a positive thing, a happy thing. So our baby boomers are getting older. So that's what we really want to focus on. Oh, no, nothing. Um, any questions on chapter two? A lot of historical stuff there. Mm -hmm. What I want you to know, we talked about public hygiene, World War II. Okay. Is that good? Yay, nay. Any questions about the history? No. Okay. Next thing we're going to look at is going to be our Healthy People 2020. 
Chapter three spoke to this. You will see, I'm going to show you something in the book because I want you guys to focus on this when you're doing some reading. Oops, I'm sharing my screen, hold on. When you see this in the book, you will see it a lot. Hold on, I don't want to share the wrong screen. Hold on a minute, I got to close out of something. Um, so what you'll see a lot in the book, I'm going to show you here. Okay, so in our book, um, I did some highlighting in the book, and sometimes I'll go over that with you. In chapter one, I told you what I want you guys to know. But when we look at like chapter three, which is what we're looking at, we're looking at how has US, US healthcare and public health care changed, right? It's a lot about change. We see the Affordable Care Act and things like that. What did you guys find interesting about some of the things you saw in chapter three? If you didn't read, you can say I didn't read because at least I know you're participating. What'd we see? What are some things? Okay, even if you didn't read, let's do it that way. What are some changes you've seen in healthcare over time? We all are not 18, so we know we've seen things over our lifetime, right? You mean like the change of the focus of the care, like to, for it to be more um, patient-centered care? Good. What is sometimes when you're anybody who's working in a hospital, long-term care setting, what is our focus nowadays? Safety, safety. Get out, get the patient out in three days or so. Yeah, get the patient out. But isn't it, isn't it interesting how in anyone who's been in a hospital in the past, I'd say 10 years, isn't it interesting how now hospitals look like hotels? Like the beds are like all fancy and they have curtains hanging and they have wall hangings and all that, right? I, I can tell you 20 years ago, no, no hospital had wall hangings or paintings or, right? And so now they make everything beautiful and all these big bathrooms and whatever, right? So realize that we're really coming into a world um, even more so. I feel like it's everywhere, but we see it in healthcare tremendously. It's all about customer service. So hospitals send home now these surveys. If anybody's been in the hospital, I mean, I have a daughter who's not young right now, but uh, I can remember when I came home and I worked at the hospital, they sent me this survey and they were like, what'd you think? And what would you improve? And what'd you think of the food? And like all kinds of strange, bizarre things. Well, that same hospital then turned into, oh, now we have menus for people and I want them to pick out of the menu. What am I going to eat? And things like that. Making people feel more human as opposed to institutionalized. But realize that's a huge trend that has changed, right? We look at also that um, in chapter, this is in chapter three, and I highlight in the chapter and show it to you guys because I want you to kind of focus on some of this stuff. And so um, I'm on page 32. I know sometimes it's a little small to see, but it's our demographic trends on page 32. So know that, um, know that uh, we look at increased fertility and decreased mortality rates is really what we're looking at. Um, we go all the way back to 77 million babies were born between 1946 and 1963, right? Which is our baby boomer generation. So we talk again about how this is a huge population that's growing. Um, in 2016, some of the dates and quotes in your book, I will tell you, I think are a little dated, but they like to go back and give you like some history. But think about like 2016, we had 322 million people in the United States, in the in America, I mean, uh, huge. We know that immigration, um, depending on who we have in politics, some people like to welcome open borders and some people like to close borders. So that's something that we're gonna be seeing as we um, continue on in healthcare. So I go through and just look at some other things. This is what I wanted to point out to you, but I'm not finding it right now. Think about the cost also. Um, does anybody know what's happened to the cost of healthcare over time? It increased. Yeah, like everything, right? Like gas is what nowadays? Four dollars a gallon or so just like everything is increasing, right? We look at the cost and how high it's going. How is that going to impact our patients? The cost of healthcare is going up. Plus likely to see. 
less likely to get care, right? Has anybody had any experience with the insurance companies where they say, oh no, I'm not paying for that. Nope, too expensive. You have to pay some of it and I'll pay some of it. Because I know with private health care, you get that a lot. They say, oh, well, you haven't met your deductible and the deductibles for some people are $1,000. For some people it's $10,000. Well, if the choice is feeding your family or the choice is getting, you know, a colonoscopy screening, you know, think about it. What, what, what are our patients going to do in the communities? All right, we look at access. We know that, unfortunately, that access to health care is less in um, lower income families, uh, lower income communities. So something for us to think about. Think about healthcare coverage, like we just said, like if you're trying to feed your family or you have to decide whether you're gonna to go to the doctor to get your high blood pressure pills, what do you think is going to be our priority there? Mm -hmm. A wonderful thing that came about was the Affordable Care Act, only wonderful in the sense, I don't ever say anything is good or bad or anything. Wonderful because it gave us an avenue. I'm not saying the act itself was good, but it gave us an avenue to open up some funds but there was a lot of uh, people that were not happy with it. So know that we have Medicare and Medicaid for our communities of need, right? And that's really important. In your book, you get a lot of case studies. We look at primary care, which was our one of our definitions there. Our public health system, how we look at the different laws and how they change. Um, U.S. Public Health Service, know that we're important, these agencies right here, I am on page 37, I would like you to know the different in industries that have impacted health care that we see. U.S. Department of Homeland Security, we know what that is. Um, I'm trying to find what I was actually went to the book for, but I can't. Okay, here we go. See this on page 38. You're going to see this throughout, totally everywhere, every chapter, about 17 times. It's all about level of prevention. So we have three levels. We have primary, which is our first level. It's like a tier, okay? Secondary and tertiary. I want to show you some pictures of what I like, how I like to describe it. And I find like pictures are sometimes a little more helpful than um, than others. So let me just pull this up for you. Take a look at this. Where are we? Take a look at this picture of of our primary, secondary, and tertiary. All right. Primary unit is like when we're at the bottom, right? What are we doing when we're trying to prevent something? The first step is to look at our entire population and support them and prevent illness. So we're going to stop it. You know, we're going to do what we need to do. Like we do screenings among the general population. We do education. With primary prevention, you're always going to see education. When we look at secondary, we already are going to have a condition. And we're going to um, help minimize the complications, help them not be as big. And by the time you get to tertiary, you're going to do that again. So if you look at this picture here. This helps you very clearly. With primary, you're gonna remember prevention, no disease process, right? No impairment, nothing's wrong with the community. We're preventing before anything happens. Then we go to secondary and we call it subclinical disease, okay? So they've got the symptoms, they've got high blood sugar, they've got high blood pressure, they've got something. So there's gonna be some impairment going on. And then tertiary is where we're gonna be treating the illness. So remember, ways to remember this, I like to do for not like ways to remember P and P, T and T. So primary is going to be prevention, no disease, right? Tertiary is going to be treatment because we already have a disease. And then in the middle, we're going to have like detection. We're going to have something's happening, but we don't know what it is. So we're going to try to prevent that from going anywhere else. Okay. So this is a really good example um, and a good way to remember are different levels of prevention. But what I was telling you is in, in our book here, hold on, I gotta get back to, our back, back to our book. So in our book, you're gonna see this all the way throughout. And this is gonna be on exams, I will tell you. So when we look at the public health care system, we have primary prevention, okay? So we have a community level program, like walking for exercise, okay? What is this doing? It's helping the community as a whole prevent illness you're getting them to exercise. 
Then we go to secondary prevention. We're going to do a family planning program to prevent unintended pregnancies among young couples, right? Because now they're going to have a condition. They're young couples. Uh, they're partaking in some activity that could result in some condition. So that's where we are. And then tertiary, we're helping people who already have the illness. So we're looking at like self-management asthma programs for children with chronic asthma to reduce their needs for hospitalization. So um, can anybody give me an example of primary prevention, something you could think of? Your diet. Okay, give me a little more. How about teaching kids um, not to vape? Yes, that would be a good one. Teaching them not to vape. It depends on the community, though. If it's a group of teenagers that's ooh, partaking in other fun activities that they think are fun, then that would be our secondary. But if it's teaching to elementary school kids who don't have access, or we hope aren't vaping yet, but as my fellow school nurses know, they may be vaping, but let's hope not. Um, you know, I, I have a, a daughter who's in middle school and she just shared, oh, one of my friends is smoking pot, mom. I said, oh yeah, how's she getting that? I don't even want to know the answer to how, but these are the kind of things we have to look at when we're looking at a community, right? What is going on? How are they accessing it? Are they getting it out of their parents' basement? Who knows? In the state of Colorado, it's legal. So is it being grown in their basement or garage? And so they think it's a fun thing to do. Who knows? Um, how about, so everybody understand on primary, we're going to be educating to the community. Nobody's sick. Nobody's injured. Uh, nobody has a family history of, you know, whatever family history or something, right? Think about secondary prevention. Where are we going to work with that? So oh, I was reading, is this the example they were talking about with the, um, TB testing? Uh, could be. Well, tell me about the TB test. Um, it was saying something, if I remember correctly, it was like um, when they go, when they do the initial testing for TB, and then when they come back around, when it's time like to have your, um, like if you get a, a TB shot just, you know, before you start a job, yeah. to check, to make sure you haven't been around it. So I can't, I can't. yeah, I could see how that would be secondary because you have to have been exposed to something. And so they'll do TB testing on uh, certain industries. They run TB testing because the, the people are being exposed to certain things. Um, okay. Think about for secondary prevention. Let's think about children. What might we able to be able to do? Like a team test. So for like vision or obesity prevention, things like that. Um, so screening, unless they were obese, then we'd have to say screenings. Screenings are one of those fine lines because it really depends on why you're screening. Are you screening because you screen the general public? Are you screening because the child has a health assessment in their education plan? It, it would really depend on why you're assessing for that. But that's that could be something. So in this secondary prevention, we really see the communities being exposed to something. We don't know they have anything, but we're trying to limit that limit that disease process. What about the mammogram in patients? Okay. So mammograms, yep. So mammograms would be secondary prevention in the sense that you have to be over 40 or, you know, or I think that's the standard now is 40, maybe 45, 40. Um, so that could be, it could also be primary prevention if you're just doing screening across the board for mammograms. Those screenings, it gets real touchy because it depends on who the community is. So let's see if I can find another one for you. There's tons of examples. I just didn't have them. Um, let's see what we have here. They always go through about 17 of them in our chapters. We'll look at chapter 21. We'll, what about we'll see when some. you educate a patient about to prevent heart attacks? Like you tell the patient, they, they ask, we need to exercise. It's not secondary? So it would be secondary if they already had a heart attack or if they had high blood pressure. If they had yeah, something, if they have blood pressure. These yeah. patients that are 
prone to a heart attack. So mm -hmm. teach them how to prevent it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then, okay, so you really work with somebody that has something factor in there that's going to help. And then by tertiary, you're treating, like you're helping minimize the complications. That's the best way to think of it. Okay. So like if you're doing um, teaching insulin dosing to a diabetic, that's going to be tertiary because you, you're not going to teach that to somebody who doesn't have it. Right. And what that will prevent, what is teaching them insulin regimens going to prevent? Like ketoacidosis. Yeah. Or compli good. Yeah. complications from the disease. Okay. So the secondary for the diabetes would be like teaching them how to make sure they check their blood sugar and the, have the right diet. Yes, as long as they're they're if they are diagnosed with. It. Yes, and as long as they're not an uncontrolled diabetic, because then okay. they're you know you're working towards. So it really depends on the community, and we'll look at this. We'll look at this a ton because it's throughout every chapter. But um, but. But just want to get it in your heads, give you a little leeway. We're going to look at Healthy People 2020, um, just a little video on it, because Chapter 3 does social determinants. Professor? Part. Yep. Uh, I have a doubt or a question when I read that. Um, the community is uh, threatened by the COVID now. So mm -hmm. what they are doing with the vaccination and uh, promote the, the, the vaccination mm -hmm. is primary or secondary? With COVID, it's going to be secondary because there's always, there's the exposure already. Okay. The whole world is exposed. Thank you. But vaccinations, like for polio, say, like kids get, you know, polio and diphtheria and tennis, all that. Um, they may be primary because yeah. depending on that community. Makes sense mm -hmm. to everybody? So you really got to look at your community. And a lot of times you say, oh, well, education, I will tell you across the board. If you see education on a test, it's usually primary. Because they're usually educating the general public about uh, whatever, healthy eating habits, you know, whatever. Okay. Um, all right. Let's take a look at that video. I think you guys will enjoy it a bit. It's going to touch upon, um, it's going to touch upon social determinants of health. And that's really what chapter three is about. And that's what I want you guys to know about. So hold on, I gotta do a couple things here. Mountain cabin. With a Oops, hold on. When I do it on Zoom, I have to- Kitchen where everyone can chef. Sometimes it cooperates, sometimes it doesn't. But the thing they'll remember forever, Watching the game Can everybody together. hear that or no? Yes, okay. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. skip ahead, it's just an ad, but here we go. Determinants of Health, a framework for reaching Healthy People 2020 goals. What makes some people healthy and others unhealthy? How can we create a society in which everyone has a chance to live long, healthy lives? These are just a couple of the important questions that Healthy People 2020 explores. The range of personal, social, economic, and environmental factors that influence health status are known as determinants of health. Determinants of health include biological and genetic makeup, individual behavior, social interactions and norms, the physical environment, and access to health services. For example, stress, discrimination, education, housing, and unemployment are all determinants of health. Healthy People 2020 places new emphasis on the social determinants of health while continuing to address the full range of determinants. Health starts in our homes, schools, and communities. Meet Carla, a six-year-old African-American girl. Carla lives in an urban area. She doesn't have any parks or playgrounds close to her apartment building, so she does not get enough daily physical activity. Carla takes the bus to school and back. Carla's grandmother stays with her after school. Carla typically watches four hours of TV a day. Carla's apartment building is old and in need of repair, exposing her to mold and lead dust. Now, picture an intervention that can change Carla's determinants of health. 
The school board and the local health department work together to keep the gym at Carla's school open later on weekdays and on days when the school is closed for vacation. This provides community members with a safe space to exercise and play for free. Now Carla's grandmother meets her at the gym after school. Carla's physical activity level increases as she spends more time playing with friends at the gym and walking around the track with her grandmother. She is spending her after school hours at the gym, which means she's watching less TV and has less exposure to mold and lead dust. Let's look at another example. Meet James, a 76-year-old Caucasian man. James can no longer drive and relies on public transportation to get around. He lives in a low-income neighborhood surrounded by convenience stores and fast food restaurants. James has to take the bus to get to the closest grocery store. Diabetes runs in his family, and James was recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. What type of intervention may benefit James? How about a subsidized farmer's market within walking distance to James' apartment? The city health department and a statewide farmer's organization create a local farmer's market program in James' community. The program is subsidized by the city, which allows farmers to sell fruits and vegetables at a lower cost. The farmer's market program targets high-density, low-income neighborhoods like James. Now, James walks to the farmer's market each week, increasing his physical activity level. He's eating more fruits and vegetables now that he can afford them. James is also eating less canned food high in sodium. James' new diet and increased physical activity are helping to keep his blood sugar under control. Public health interventions typically target one or more determinants of health through information, policies, and programs. Each intervention is designed to produce a specific health outcome or outcomes. Outcomes could include positive behavior change, reduction in diseases, conditions, and their risk factors, fewer injuries, improved well-being and health-related quality of life, and increased health equity and reduced health disparities. This is at the core of the Healthy People 2020 framework. Every intervention has a life cycle of its own, a continual process of improvement made up of four phases. Assessment, monitoring, evaluation, and dissemination. Through this cycle, an intervention can be refined for greater effectiveness. Healthy People 2020 places renewed emphasis on determinants of health, health equity, and healthy development throughout all stages of life. By addressing determinants of health and promoting health equity and healthy development across the lifespan, Healthy People 2020 provides a framework for a society in which all people can be healthy, both now and for generations to come. For more information, go to www.healthypeople.com. Alrighty, so on this one are social determinants of health. Did everybody see here what our interventions can do? How one tiny intervention we can do as a community nurse can do and change for our family. Think about our some, you, the social determinants of health. Shout them out to me. What are some of them? Examples of them. Not having access to nutritious food. All right, so nutrition would be a social determinant. Good. Good. What else? Income. Absolutely. Tell me something more about income. Living conditions. Living conditions, good. Uh, who said income? Me. You did, right, Albert? Albert? All right, tell me something. What? Tell me why you think income would have something to do with it. Because income, I guess, affects everything from living condition to access to health care, whether you have insurance or not. And uh, it even affects nutrition, I guess, because, you know, cheap food is, is bad food. So. Yeah, has anybody, I don't frequent fast food restaurants just because I don't like them, but I was at McDonald's the other day and I came home and I said to my husband, I like diet soda. So I go to the fast food restaurants for diet soda. But anyway, I was at McDonald's and I said, like a family could for $15 have drinks, um, chicken nuggets or a burger, two burgers, fries. They have like a $3 menu. So if you had five people in your family, you could feed them for $15, right? And 
if you go to the grocery store and you make burgers for the family, I mean, anyone knows who does the food shopping. I don't, but I know how expensive it is. You're not going to get away with $15 for a full dinner. So that's fries, a burger, drink for $3 for five people. Come on. Like, absolutely, Albert. Thank you. It's a good thing for us to think about when we're looking at this and saying, why are people eating this way? Why do we see so many children obese today? Well, there's lots of reasons for that. But give me some thoughts on why we see obesity as our biggest problem among young children. Too much screen time. Food is more expensive. Yep. Fruits and vegetables are absolutely more expensive. Why else? They're just not active. They don't have devices. Yep. Electronic devices are like the worst for them, right? What else do you see kids doing that says, meh, why do I have to? Anybody have kids that are participate in sports? All right, any of you guys, yeah, share with us how much you're paying to, for them to play sports. A lot. A lot. Angie, what, is your, what do your kids play? Uh, I have one that he's, he plays everything, baseball, football, soccer, and in the meantime, you know, with all the registration fees and everything, it's probably four or $500 per sport. And then my daughters who do dance, gymnastics, dance alone is probably $600 a month for travel. Oh, yeah. Now, how are you going to be able to afford that for a kid if you can't afford to go to the grocery store every week, right? So we really want to look at these social determinants of health. Now, can we help these people? So as a school nurse, where's my fellow school nurse? Where is she? Uh, I don't see her face. But What do we do in the schools to help with this? Anybody know? Do you guys offer like um, food vouchers or programs for lunches? Reduced lunch. Reduced, yeah. Yeah, reduced reduce lunches. In the district I teach in, which is a huge district, they get free breakfast, free lunch to every student. What I will tell you is, and I've gone to nutrition about it because it makes me so sad, they serve like cocoa puffs and chocolate milk. And I'm like, really? This is what we're serving to young kids? when we're worried about obesity. But you know why they serve that? Because the kids eat it. Mm -hmm. If they were serving, you know, I don't know, whole wheat toast, I don't yeah. know, but, right? Or Cheerios, anybody who has kids knows that they way prefer the Honey Nut Cheerios over the plain ones, right? Of course, they're sweeter, they taste better. So interesting things to look at in the school nurse community that you, you deal with. And that's going to be one thing that um, I am going to emphasize again, when we're looking at across the board, and this is one of our chapters we talk about tonight, across the lifespan, biggest problem with, with kids is going to be obesity. And we're going to see that they get into accidents easier because they don't know, oh, I'm supposed to stop at the red light. They haven't really been, if they're not taught that, how do they know that, right? All right, so we'll look at that. We have, um, like I said, tonight is a lot of material to cover. What I'm gonna make sure that we do is um, have you guys interact more so than we are right now, but I wanna get through the stuff from last week and then we're going on to, we're coming right upon chapter 21, which is vulnerable populations, okay? Um, and let's take a break at this point. It's 8.56. So let's take a break. We'll do nine minutes. The only reason I'm doing nine minutes tonight is because we're covering a lot of material for our exam next week. So um, usually I'll give you 10, but just give me a minute quicker. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'll see everybody at eight, I'm uh, sorry, 9.04. Anybody have anything for me? I'm here. I'm just shutting off my camera.
All right, guys, welcome back. We're at the our nine minute mark there. Hope that was enough time for everybody to just regroup a little bit. I know we're covering a ton of content tonight. I know that. Um, but I want to tell you is that I try to cover it and apply it to the best I can to something that you will remember. I found that that was most helpful for me in nursing school was to say, where, how can I remember this? And how is this going to have any meaning to me as a nurse? So remember, sometimes people say community health, what are we going to do about that? How's that even going to matter? You know, things like that. And funny thing is, is that um, we serve as nurses, whether that's in a hospital, long-term care setting, anywhere we serve, we can always assess our populations and see what can we do to make their lives a little better, right? Even if it's once they leave. And sometimes that's where you'll see community nursing. You'll see it in case management and things like that, right? What's going on in the home. Um, we're going to talk a bit about families and when we go into the homes to assess them, but right at this point, I want to talk a little bit about vulnerable populations. This is something that you will need to know on your test. It is our chapter 21 in the book. Okay, so vulnerable populations are going to be those groups that are going to be more susceptible to illness, to, um, to not have as great access to health care, things like that. So when we take a look at our um, vulnerable populations, Sorry, I just want to pull it up for you guys. And I keep doing this. Give me one second because I have my email open and I don't want to share that. Okay. Um, when we take a look at it, we look at our social determinants of health among our vulnerable populations. Okay. So SDOH here is going to be social determinants of health. We're going to look at the education. We're going to look at our economic stability, our neighborhoods, our health and health care, and social and community context, okay? We're going to have some really good examples of these vulnerable populations. Does anybody know what they are? Any like the 
homelessness and people that um, substance substance users. Okay, it's definitely going to be homeless. Yep. Who else? Anybody else know who else? Pregnant adolescents. Mm-hmm. Yippers. Here is our group right here, box twenty-one one in our reading. Right. It is poor and homeless. It's going to be our veterans. It's going to be our pregnant adolescents. Migrants. Mm -hmm. Migrant workers. Mm -hmm. Mentally ill. Our substance abusers. Pregnant women. Mm, so pregnant women aren't unless they're young. Interesting enough. But um, we're going to look at abused individuals or those with domestic violence. Um, and anyone who has a you know immunocompromised disease i would i wouldn't focus too much on that i think about the poor the homeless the veterans the pregnant adolescents our migrant workers our substance abusers and are severely mentally ill why do you think they're vulnerable why are they more likely to have problems with their health most of them can't afford it they don't okay. go and get any primary care to prevent anything they don't have access to the healthcare system. And funny thing is, is that they have access, right? Because we as a country have provided Medicaid to people who are low income. But what is it that they don't have access to? You're, you're on to something, but what don't they have access to? Like education. Mm -hmm. yeah, Transportation. Transportation or knowledge about Medicaid. Right? So think about somebody who's like mentally ill, right? They're hearing voices in their head. Do you think their voices in their head are saying, go get yourself some Medicaid? No. I say that in jest. I say that funny, but it's true, right? That's not going to be a priority in their life. So that's something to really think about. Here is what I was talking to you guys about earlier that um, will be on your exams. And this book loves, oops, what is this doing? Loves to emphasize. Sorry, I don't know why this is showing up. Just take me a second. I'll stop sharing and try to get rid of it. There we go. Um, when we look at, um, oh, now it's gone. Of course it is. I was just, gonna, oh, here it is. Healthy People 2020 are objectives. You are going to see this through every chapter. You're going to see it like 7,000 times. So know your objectives for different groups of people. And this one, it's vulnerable populations, page 329 in your book. Questions on an exam may be, what are our Healthy People 2020 objectives for vulnerable populations? Okay, that's what kind of information we'd like you to think about. So no increase the proportion of persons with health insurance. We just talked about why they don't know it because they're not able to be educated or don't have the means to be educated because they're struggling with lots else going on. We want to reduce the number of HIV cases among adolescents and adults. We want to increase the proportion of patients with children under three whose doctors can talk to them about positive parenting. Who has any experience with children nowadays and positive parenting? I can tell you about 10, meh, eight times a day, I say. Who taught these parents the parent. What's the problem with adolescence and parenting? Adolescents who are having children and parenting. They still are in need of parenting. <laughs> mm -hmm. For sure. They're not done. Be they're not done being guided by parents. What happens sometimes with our kids that we see? Who's the parent in a family? The grandparents help grandparents. out a lot. Grandparents could be the parent. Uh, aunt could be the parent. I worked in labor and delivery for many years, and you know who a lot of the parents were? The parents were the sister of the mother. So the mother gave birth, but the mother was compromised, so it would go to her sister. You know, it goes to whoever the family is, whoever the family is, right? And so this is where we see things. And with adolescents who are pregnant, if they don't have some guidance, which no parent gets guidance. I don't know how many of us have given birth, but we leave that hospital with a new baby in our arms and we know nothing, right? They don't sit there and say, this is what you do when they cry. This is what you do when they're three. This is what you do what they do when they're 10, right? 
So think how important that is parenting, you know, parent education and how that may help children to be healthier as a whole. So when we look at these people, we, took the, we talked about their social determinants, know that economics is gonna be a big one that we look at when we're um, talking about that. We talked about the Affordable Care Act and how that has impacted our communities. So we look at their health status and we see a lot of disabilities among our vulnerable populations, of course, right? Because they aren't able to, somebody spoke about primary care, they don't go to the primary care. How about veterans? Are veterans, think about, has anybody served in the military? I can't see everybody because I'm sharing. So if you have, just say yes. Anybody married to somebody who served in the military? PTSD, huge, right? You can speak to that one-on-one. -on -one. I can speak to that. I'm not married to a military man, but boy, have I seen PTSD among uh, friends, husbands. All right, so we look at our public policies that affect them. You know, we have the Social Security Act, Medicare and Medicaid as of 1965, so it was good. Um, state health insurance, those kind of acts that we look at uh, with our vulnerable populations. Remember when we're looking at this, we're looking to improve quality. We talked about this, quality and safety is really what we're doing. When we're working with our vulnerable populations, we're gonna be a bunch of things. We're gonna help them. We're gonna look for ways to, um, to help them get out of what they're in, help with levels of prevention. Here we go is um, our primary permit, sorry, primary prevention. Here's an example with our vulnerable population. Give influenza vaccines to vulnerable populations. Hold on, I have to stop sharing and mute somebody because somebody's noisy. I don't know how I'm muting, but I'm just checking. Okay, so here's our primary, secondary, and tertiary on our um, on our vulnerable populations. We give influenza vaccine, right? Because we want to try to make sure we prevent. Here is where screening is going to be secondary. Why is screening going to be secondary in our vulnerable populations? because they were already exposed or they are on risk of exposure. Yeah, exactly, good. They're, they're at risk of exposure. And this is where somebody was talking to us about the TB. I forget who that was. I can't see everybody. I wouldn't remember if I saw her face, but she was talking about TB. So um, screening homeless adults are gonna be, you know, because they're pro probably vulnerable, meaning they're exposed to that TB. And then abused women, We'll look at tertiary here. So we have provide that medicine for that TB patient. That's going to be a tertiary because they already have it. We got to do something to treat them. Develop community-based exercise programs for people who are obese and have increased blood pressure and increased blood sugar, right? Because we know exercise is going to help with um, those conditions. So we are going to look at um, secondary for homeless. We're gonna read their skin TB test and if necessary, tell them where to go once it's, once it's there, okay? That's about all I'm gonna touch on with, um, with vulnerable populations for right now. Know that you have a big assignment, which you're gonna be doing in your communities or you're gonna be look, doing a windshield survey, which means you drive around. And in your actual communities, you're gonna find these populations and you're going to present on them with a um, PowerPoint. So it's, it's really interesting because what you do is you find a lot of information from like your local health departments and stuff. But as that gets closer, we'll go over that. But that's one of your big assignments in our class. All right. So now that takes us to 18, 19, and 20 for this week. And what I wanted to do with 18 is it really talks about family assessment. And I hope you guys looked at it in the book. Give me some definitions of family. Anybody? Don't have to be from the book, can be from your head. Nuclear family? Okay, nuclear family, which means what? Mom, dad, and kids living in the right. same household. Yep, that's one family. What other kind of families do we see? The step parent, step child, blended, blended yeah. Good, blended stepmom, stepchild, stepdad, stepmom. I don't know if anybody's seen, but I see frequently. It'll be a boyfriend raising children, 
of an ex wife or whatever, you know, so think about how our different families are. We see a lot of times now, um, to men raising children, to women raising children, right? So we have to be really sensitive to all that that we're, we see. And when we're out there in the community, what is primary for us when we're looking at a family? It's primary for us as nurses, but what's really important that we get in check before we go to assess the family? The roles that everybody play? Well, that's really important once we're there, absolutely. That's key. What do we need to be really careful about? We have to be careful about this as a nurse in any field and particularly with family assessment. Our cultural bias biases. Mm -hmm. Not just cultural, very good. Not just cultural, but our biases. Whether you believe that a family consists of one person in the household raising all the kids, or whether you think it's fair that a grandmother is raising children, doesn't really matter, does it? Because their definition of family is their definition of family. And for some, a definition of family, and I've heard this from a couple of the students, their family is their animals, right? Okay. Those animals are as important as children are to us. So we have to be really careful as nurses to drop those biases, have, walk in there with a clean slate, right? You don't walk into a home and say, why are they living this way? Where's the mother? Where's the father? What's happened in today's day and age, and I'm sure you've all seen it, is there's this like ideal family. And so in our book, it talks about a healthy family, okay? Now it doesn't say healthy family has to be mom and dad, but healthy family in our book, and what they really emphasize is the importance of interaction among the family. Somebody, Amber, you said something about roles, I think. Knowing the roles? Yes, ma'am. Yep, that's really important when we're looking at families. What are the roles and how do they interact? So they say healthy family are those that sit and spend time together and talk to one another. They see a reduction with children in drug use and alcoholism and other types of behaviors when you have that open communication, when you have that time spent together. So if a family says, I go to church and my son goes to... Uh, you know, what, I don't know, goes to the child section and we sit in the, you know, in the temple or church or mosque or whatever and listen to the sermon. That's not really going to be a therapeutic time for family. Although it's nice they all go together. What we really want to emphasize as far as the book is concerned is time spent together is what their definition of a healthy family is. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't define what's healthy for anyone except for myself. So just remember, this is book based. I'm not saying that this is true or not true. I'm just telling you this is what our book wants us to, to focus on for healthy people, healthy families, so sorry. Um, so what's happened though is society as a whole has changed that nuclear family that we speak of maybe is harder to have happen. What do we notice is like, everyone knows this is increasing by the minute. Talking. What happens? What? I, I might be I'm thinking wrong. I said it's poverty, but I don't know. Good. I appreciate Christy. I appreciate your input. I like feedback. I like people to answer. I could answer all the questions, but I don't like to. So um, like single parent home. Absolutely. And what causes a single family home? Um, maybe unwed parents. Divorce. Divorce. This. Think about the rate of divorce right now, guys. I mean, it's huge. More than half of the family, more than half of the couples that get married are divorced. What does that tell us as we're teaching our society and teaching our children about the need for this nuclear family, right? And I'm not saying a nuclear family is necessary, trust me, I don't. But in our book, this is something that I really emphasize is that we look at that. What we see an increase in huge right now huge and demographically speaking we see a huge increase in unmarried mothers right um adolescent mothers we have seen a decrease is that because of healthy people 2020 yeah who knows but we have seen a decrease which is nice um 
you know, and those are immigrants who are coming here, you know, we do see an increase for them, but really emphasize our unmarried moms. So that's causing our single family homes, right? And we look in our book just real quickly, and then we're going to do a jam board. Do you guys know how to do jam boards? No, don't worry. We'll go over it in a sec. Um, let's just look real quickly. I don't want to skip any of those families that I talked about. So we look at a married family. Remember when we're looking at them, it can be people, both people are working or nobody's working or one lives in New York and one lives in California and they're both very successful. So the kids are in a home where the mom and dad are married, but they're never together, right? How about a stepmother, family, stepfather, adoptive, foster? I don't know if anybody has experience with the foster um, foster community. Those children and what they're impacted by is tremendous. It changes the way they see the world. So fostering is a wonderful thing know that those children going into those foster families though oftentimes are coming with some type of trauma we see huge single single parent families uh could they be widowed could they be divorced do we see them being split i see a lot of my kids in my school they go to mom for sunday monday tuesday then they switch you know wednesday thursday friday then the weekends they alternate think about what that's doing you know to the kids and their development um good that they have both families both parents, whether it's two men, women, man, woman, girl, boy, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter who they are. They're seeing both parents. So that's important. But just think about it. Multi-adult household. Think about couples that don't have children. That's another type of family. Uh, extended family. How many have uh, grandparents or um, siblings that live with them or neighbors or friends or right? This all. These are all our types of families. And, you know, we talk about uh, home sharing individuals. What about two people that live together in a townhouse because they need to split the rent, right? That's a type of family right there. Know that families changed over time. And we t tend to look at um, family life experiences and how that impacts them. Um, we want to look at right here, box 1813. And the only reason I emphasize this is because I'm going to say it again. Healthy family is not my definition. Okay, please understand that. What we look at when we're looking at a healthy family is that they're going to communicate and listen to all members, support one in each other, teach respect for each other, have a sense of trust, play together, play games together. I don't know for you guys who were in nursing school the last time you had time to sit around and play a game, but you'll know it'll happen again after nursing school, I promise. Um, interact. Leisure time together, share responsibilities. They have traditions. They have things they follow. I mean, they say the family short shares a religious core. I, I, I personally don't necessarily agree with that, but the book does. So we're going with the book here. Um, everybody's honored. You have boundaries. And here we look again at levels of prevention. So our primary, we're going to educate our parents about healthy choices for children. Our secondary, we're going to screen teens for obesity with a BMI greater than 30 because they have something going on there. Um, somebody talked about annual health assessments and we're going to analyze height and weight as part of an annual health assessment if our BMIs are over 30. Uh, tertiary prevention, we're going to help communities to get some food out to those people that don't have food, right? We have four different ways that we look at structure and I just want to go over this quickly. Family is a content, family is a client, family is a system, and family is a component of society. This is how we really have to look at it. So individual yeah. is um, in the forefront, we pay attention to the family as a context around our patient. And then the family is a client, everybody's part of that, right? And then a family is a system, interactional family, everybody depends on one another. Okay, and then our family is a component of society. How does our family play with the legal, educational, health, social, financial, religious um, factors? Okay, I'm going to. I want to make sure I cover everything. Family. Okay, we're going to do a little Jamboard. So Jamboard is on Google, and I created it for you guys. What I'm going to do is break you up into some groups. I'm going to put in the chat your um, your the. Google Jamboard link, what you're going to do is you click on it. Okay. And what I've done is I set up a little scenario 
And what I want you guys to do is, depending on your group, you're either going to do, do, do slide two, three, four, or five. Let me pull up my Jamboard and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Since Has anyone done one? No? Okay. I'll let you guys like talk to one another a little bit. I find it fun for you guys. Um, okay. Everybody see? Here's my Jamboard. I'm going to share it with everyone. So the ideal family that's portrayed in the media of the 20th century is a working dad and mom who stays home and their children. People tend to look up to this, okay? Now I'm gonna give you a series of questions depending on your group, okay? So so up at the top here, does everybody see the arrow? Okay, so depending on your group, group number one, you're gonna do slide two. Group number three, you're gonna do, oh, sorry. Group number one, you're doing two. Two, you're doing three, got it? Three, you're doing four. And so over here on the left-hand side is a little thing called a sticky note. If you click on the sticky note, what you can do is you can type your answer. I'm just typing something silly. And then you press save. Okay. And once you do that, I'll show you what it does and then I'll take it out. And once you do that, it'll give you like a little sticky note here. It's pretty cool. So what I'm going to have you guys do is we'll work for like, I don't know, five minutes together as a group. Um, and we're going to um, get some answers. And then when we come back together, you guys are going to explain where you came up with your, um, with your rationale. Okay. Are we clear on that? I'll come in and join your group. So don't worry if you're a little lost, I'll help you. Okay, I am going to stop sharing. I'm going to share the link for the gym. Uh, yeah, I'm going to share it in the chat. Does it, does it matter if we're using Zoom on our phone? <laughs> Will it affect it? You should not, um, I don't think so. I mean, as long as you can access Google. All right, here's our link. Okay, hey, don't go there yet, but I'm sending it to everybody. Okay, I'm gonna randomly assign you guys to groups. So remember, group one is doing slide two, group two is doing slide three, group three, four, and four, five. I think I have six on here. Let me just double check. Yeah, I have six. All right, so I'm gonna break you up into five groups. Yeah. All right, you ready? We're going to randomly go to five groups. And what I want you guys to do is when you're in your group, did everybody copy the link or click on it? Everybody copy or click on the link that's in the chat. Okay, and I'm going to create five, we said. All right, so you're going to go in there, and I want you guys to talk to one another, figure out what you're doing, if you have any trouble with the sticky notes, but and then we'll come back together as a group in about, let's say, five minutes. So that'll be 7.35, okay? All right, here we go. We're all going into our break. I don't know if it's just me. What? I don't have access. It says I need access to your Google Drive. No, you don't need access to my Google Drive. Mine, mine popped yeah, up mine like that, too. Same. The same for me. Yeah, mine's saying that, too. All right, hold on, hold on. <laughs> As well. well, that's silly. Why is this restricted? Hold on. Why is it private? Let me just change it. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, it's restricted. Ugh. Why is that? I've never had it restricted. Hold on, let me see if I can unrestrict it. Only people add I can open with this one. Oh my goodness. Hold on. Oh, that's no fun. All right. Well, I guess we'll do it as a group. That's disappointing. Sorry, guys. I've never had it restricted before. And I'm wondering if it's because I didn't sign in under my Fortis username. All right. Anyway, uh, we'll do it as a group then. And you guys can just give me some answers when we do it. Okay. Um, All right, 
So here we are. Our, you know what? Why don't you give me some answers in the chat? That way we can add them that way. All right. So our first question on this one is going to be, um, did this ideal family ever exist? Why or why not? Give me some of your thoughts in the chat. Can we read the question again? Sure. It's just the ideal family portrayed in the media of the 20th century, which is like really not, you know, like we don't really look at this so much anymore, but you know, sometimes you do. Is a mom who stays home working dad and their children. People tend to look up to this. Do you think it ever existed? Why or why not? I think it did exist at a certain time because women didn't have as much rights back then, but now everything has changed. The women can work, the man can work. There's people who are single and are parents. All right, good. What? Well, yeah, one year. There classmate. may be a need. Sorry. Go ahead, Albert. For, for two incomes as well, more than before, maybe. Yeah, and somebody said not today because it costs so much, can't afford. Same kind of thing. Somebody does believe that the family did exist years ago when it was affordable. So we're all taught, we go back to living, like cost of living, right? Economics. How has that impacted us? How has that impacted our communities? Some think that this family idea is in decline. What do you think? Most of you guys said, yeah, but give me an example. Why do you think it's in decline? So we talked about economics. Why else do you think it's in decline? Good single moms have increased. Yep, our rate of divorce. Less time together. Think about how has technology impacted families. Nowadays, you know, kids, more screen time for sure, but think about it. Kids can go on the internet, adults can go on the internet, and you know, they're married, they're bored at home, they go on the internet now, they can go on in, I bet, what, less than five seconds and find someone to talk to who they don't even know. Well, isn't that great? Now I can have this full conversation with this person I don't even know, right? And they're way more interesting than my husband because my husband's worried about our economics, so he's not gonna talk to me, but I can talk to this other guy. And think about, I don't know if anybody's single, but I have a single sister. And so she's on, you know, Bumble and whatever, these other sites, right? These guys, funny thing, I only see it from her perspective, but these guys have pictures of themselves from like 15 years ago. And like, you can tell because the quality of the color is terrible. So you're like, what? But the But some people aren't educated on that. So maybe they say, oh, look at this, you know, if they're looking just for a you know physical appearance, right? Or they think about it on these websites, you can say anything. You could say I'm a millionaire. You could say I own 17 homes everywhere. I mean, who knows, right? It's like having unwanted guests in your home, which is exactly. Um, and you know, I like what one of our classmates said. They said it's ironic because sometimes you have exactly what you need in your home. But we've just become a world of technology and we want everything quick and we want an answer and we want people who seem, you know oh, they're the best and they got the greatest this and that. And, you know, kids are that way. Oh, he has the latest phone. He has the latest this, the latest that. That makes it really important. Oh, look at his sneakers that are, you know, $150, right? Internet favored virtual relationships that can, right, part the couple for sure. Some guys are more focused on games and sports. Absolutely. How easy is it to just Google a game and you can go play and then people talk to you? There's one words with friends, which I don't play computer games, but like I know strangers can talk to you and play scrabble with you like it's entertaining for people so do we see this as our family decline possibly how do we define family today and what are some values that you see within families today for me i define family as probably the uh, one that was mentioned traditional because that's just how i grew up and so um those values just stick with me and I just see it along with my brothers and sisters who marry now. It's like the same tradition. So, Awesome. Good. Families are going to value religion for sure. One of our classmates said. There's some families that um, they see people who may not technically be their family, but as part of their family. Absolutely. 
we talked about, I think I talked about it, and that was more community, but last week we talked about every single one of you in this class is part of a family. You guys are all in nursing school. You all have the same values and that's that you wanna help and provide care for people. So that's a type of family too. Um, you know, do you value, do you have a nurse nursing ethic uh, belief and values that you guys all should support? I hope so. We'll talk about nursing ethics and that stuff, but we don't want to hurt people, right? If we're going into nursing and you want to hurt people, you're in the wrong profession. Okay, so think about those kind of values, trust, honesty, working hard. Everybody's trying to make a living, you know, even homeless people, they're trying to make, they're trying to make a life for themselves. Their life is vulnerable. They're more likely not to be as easily successful as someone who has a home over, you know, a roof over their head, but. And we take a look real quickly is how does a nurse's definition of family influence our care and support? We spoke about this, so just share with me something, anything. Well, we view those patients as our own family sometimes, so we would want to treat them as our own. Absolutely. What do I have to be really careful about with a family assessment? Bias and prejudice. Mm -hmm. you leave your beliefs at the door right you can go home and believe them but they stay at the door when you walk in that house okay um so good i'm glad i like to hear all of you guys and so when we're assessing a family this is going to lead us right into chapter 19 which i'm not going to have a lot of time to go over with you guys so i do need you to read 19 um, but I will tell you that I'll look at EcoMap and GenoMap because that is something I want you to know for your exam. But uh, what are some considerations we're going to consider when we're doing assessing a family? Don't be criticized if there's a gay in the family or a person that is using drugs. So try to don't make comments or criticize them. Good. Traditions, beliefs, I like that. Non what else are we going to What? Non-judgmental. Good. We're going to look at their culture and their personal beliefs. What is something to remember when you're walking into someone's home to do a family assessment? When you're walking into a home of a patient, anybody who has done home health care, things to remember is that that's their home. Whether their home is a one bedroom filled with bugs and rodents and whatever, that's still their home. You know, that's most good. People, I was just about to say that. Yeah, those people, that's their home. And like, while they value that, so be really careful in supporting that with your patients, right? Uh, while you might sit there and say, why don't they, you know, whatever, clean the house or put the dishes away? Well, maybe they have nowhere to put the dishes, so they have to sit in the sink, right? I mean, keep this all in consideration. This takes us into a family assessment. It's really important when you're looking at families that you are considerate of where they're going, where they're from, respecting them. Very good. You know, that's just, it's just so important. I'm going to tell you that in... Um, Chapter 18, it really just goes over family assessment. 19 is going to really look at our environment when we're going into a home and our families. What are the roles? Who's doing what, right? Um, I'm going to talk quickly about an eco map and a genome map. Does anyone know what either of those are? Eco, is that the one that you uh, basically, they go back from your family history, like three generations or something like that? Mm, you're close. The jarring. Okay. Mm, sort of ish. Sort of. So okay. one is going to be environmental and one is going to be genetic. Which one do you think is going to be environmental? Eco map. Eco map. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you, I'm really big about tricks to remember things. So that's one of our how we remember that one. An eco map is going to be we're looking at our environment factors and our genome map. We're going to look at genetics. So in our book on page 292. Let's go look real quickly. Oops. Wait. Oh, oh, there we go. Oops. So sorry, guys. I go quickly. 
What's the TV on? We have a example of a genome map right here. Take a look here what we're looking at, okay? So we have diabetes, we have hypertension, we have ovarian cancer, autoimmune, hypertension, hypertension, hypertension. We are looking here in our genome map and what we look at is for uh, health patterns and how, we, how are our genes going to influence what we can help predict for our community members, okay? So something to important is um, remember with Gino, we're looking at genetics. We're looking at what has gone on in that family. We do know nowadays um, lots of things, lots and lots of things. Anybody know conditions that are genetically driven? Heart disease. Diabetes. Hypertension. Yeah, hypertension, diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is completely genetic. They attribute it. And trauma. Those are your two big ones you're going to see with type 1 diabetics. Um, and so if you are doing a, an assessment here of a family and you're doing a genogram, the good thing about this, it helps us look at what has happened and who along the way. We look at different people, right? So we start in the center here. Uh, Jean, um, who was 40, born in 42. Bill, who was in 43. Rick, who was in 41. And then what comes off a of Jean? What comes off of uh, Bill, what you know, and how all those factors interact. Okay. Here's a quick way of um, like how you can perform one. I, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. You know, you're going to open open ended questions, therapeutic communication with the patients, establish that trust. Say, hey, what happened to this one? And if they don't know, you leave it on there as a circle and like question mark. You don't know. And then if something seems to pop up and you think like, well, they didn't have that in that family diagram is it possible is that one person I didn't know or they didn't know right so important things to think about there um and then we look at our ecograms and that's going to be our uh, our eco map sorry that's going to be our uh, maps that we look at that are going to represent interactions with other groups and organizations and we take a look here we go okay so environmentally bill he works full time for recreation, he likes to do biking, fishing. Maybe if he um, has some high levels of something in his blood, we'll know it's because he does fishing. What might some sort of fish give you high levels of? Mercury. Mercury. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So might we see a connection there? Um, extended parents, extend elderly parents, they live in Canada, it's environmental. So if he gets sick, is, is, are his elder parents gonna be able to come help him? Probably not, because they're in Canada. You know, does he have a close, close, close group of peers? Where's our extended family look? Do we get primary care? What do we do? Do we have friends? Do we have a social? We look at our mental health here. So remember my trick for this. Echo map, eco map is another way to say it. It's gonna be environmental. The genogram is going to be genetic. Okay. Um, it's a really good way to do a family assessment. That's why they go through a lot of it. There's a lot about evidence-based practice. We will see quickly on home visits. Um, no, we do a lot in home visits. One thing I want to emphasize with home visits as nurses, I don't care what home you're going into. There are safety, safety, safety is going to be your priority for yourself. If you're going by yourself, Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, always make sure you're near the exit. Very good. What else do you wanna make sure of? If they have any power on. Oh yeah, power is gonna be a big one. What else? I guess like let someone else know, like um, once you're out of the environment, like knowing what's how long, like how long you plan on being in there. Like if they see like a certain time goes by to like kind of check in. Yeah, and what I will tell you is um, if this were on a test and you know, I'm not saying it's on a test, but it might show up on a test at some point. So if it were on a test, what they're gonna want you to emphasize is you're telling someone when you get there, not when you're leaving. But I like your idea. You wanna tell them a time frame. Hey, I'm going, I should be there an hour. You know, sitting by the door, you're gonna empower your families. 
I thought there was a little thingy I wanted to show you guys, but I don't see it really clear. Um, safety, safety, safety is key when you're going into a home, okay? You don't know what you're walking into. You don't know who's going to be there. You don't know what the roles are in the family. You got to prepare, 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 be ready. Sit by an exit. Don't get yourself cornered. Don't go in a closed room. You want to develop that therapeutic communication. Um, watch your biases. What else could I say? I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, anything else we could think of when you're going into a home? No? All right. Uh, any questions up to this point? All right, chapter 20 does, does about health risk across the lifespan. What I have done for us is we're going to do a Kahoot. If you guys haven't read, take a guess, okay? So I want everybody to log into my Kahoot. This I know I can share. So hold on, we're going to go to our Kahoot. This is going to cover some of the main topics. I want you to know what are high risk factors for every single age category. I want you to know that, okay? That's very important because we need to know when we're going into a home, what are we looking at? Okay, so I did some questions for you that'll help guide you, but do know I want you to go through that chapter. I'm gonna show you right here in chapter 20. I want you to go through, they're going to give you children. Remember we talked about this six times already about obesity. And then when you go down, then you look at recommendations to prevent. So we're gonna have our primary prevention here because unless the kids are obese. And then you look at injuries and incidents. Remember, unintentional like um, uh, like falling off a bike without a helmet. It's gonna be commonplace in a child of school age. Cause I think, eh, I don't need a one. Or if they skateboard, eh, I don't need one. I had a kid the other day who was, she, she was cut up her entire body, her abdomen, two arms, her forehead, all from skateboarding and she didn't wear a helmet. And that wasn't going to protect her arms, but um, what a mess that was. So remember kids that age, look at infants, uh, about what kinds of injuries they're going to have, toddlers, school age, adolescents. Adolescents are going to talk about very quickly and briefly their highest rate for violence. It's actually dating violence. If you go to, I think it was CDC. I had it pulled up for you guys, but I'm trying to get through this as quick as I can. Um, CDC has a whole entire section on their website about dating violence among adolescents. Because remember these adolescents are just learning what a relationship is. They're just learning what dating is, right? And then they go and if they've watched an abusive um, family member, grandma, grandpa, uncle, aunt, who knows, what is that gonna do to their perception of what's normal, okay? So we look at that, playground safety, Good to know. Um, on elders, we're going to see abuse is our biggest concern with elder population. You always want to make them as independent as they can be. Those with chronic health conditions, make sure that we're going to have ongoing care for them. We're going to promote to the parents what we do. Um, I think that about covers. So we want, oh, yeah, smoking. Don't let me forget about smoking. Okay, so. We all know smoking is bad, right? We learned this in 101, nursing 101. All right, so smoking is bad, but you know what ends up happening? A lot of people who smoke then turn around and say, oh, I'm going to vape. It's better for me. Well, whether vaping is better for you or not, I'm not going to argue that because I don't have enough data to support that. But what I can tell you is the oils and the vapes are very harmful for, ch for children. So you want to teach your people who are smokers, A, smoking is you know, not great for kids' respiratory status. But if you're going to vape, watch those so, oils. Go ahead, what? No, I said um, to do it away from from the the child. Do it away from the kid. Yep. And yep. what else do you want to make sure you do with that vape? Put it up Keep somewhere. It out of reach. Yep. Keep it out of reach. Put it somewhere they can't see. All right. Here's where we're not going to judge. Whether they smoke, they vape, they do whatever. Okay. You don't want to, I mean, you want to teach them, you know, educate them on the harmfulness of that. But you also want to not make them feel that they have to apologize to you for what they're doing, right? You want them to know that you understand and you accept it. And so, hey, if you're going to do it, you know, 
<clears throat> make sure you keep it out of your kids hands there is something that i want you to know about the older americans act um elder abuse has been something that we, you guys i'm sure talked about in med surge um so older americans act established the administration of aging and state agency to provide social services for older people our mission is to help older adults and this is true across the board we want older adults to maintain their dignity and live as independently as they can okay so when you're looking at these these um, elder communities and elder adults, you want to really make sure that they're feeling comfortable that they can take care of themselves and promote that the best you can. Even if it means they're living with their children, that doesn't mean their children need to take over the checkbook, right? They can still write the checks. They can still do their own thing. They can still, you know, shower. They just have somebody with you. Um, all right, we're going to do our Kahoot now, and that will summarize for us pretty much what I want you to know, not exclusively, okay? I'm not saying this is the only thing I want you to know. But I want you to know those life across this uh, across the scan, what uh, across the age span, what what's important. Okay, let's do our Kahoot. Um, oops, I don't have it open. Hold on one second. I'll do it. And that's going to end us tonight. But before, when we're done the Kahoot, I'll just go over what we have this week, just so that nobody's confused. Um, I was happy to see almost every single person got it in on time for me. So that was great. Um, I didn't have to take points off, um, which was good. I think you guys have. All right, hold on. Let's. Oh. Alrighty. Why is this wrong again? <sighs> All right. Everybody know how to do a Kahoot? Mm -hmm. right, so if you don't know, you're going to go to Kahoot, K A H O O T. And then you will have to get a number. And I'm going to give you the number in a second. We'll share our screen. Okay. I'm ready to share here. All righty. So after you're on Kahoot, you're going to put in the our code, our code, which I'm going to move up. Oops, I know. Sorry, hold on. Everybody see our Kahoot screen? Yes. One zero nine 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 nine. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in whatever you feel like as your name. Can I move us? Oh, there we go. All right, so we got 14. I'm going to give it another minute, and then I'll just play. 15. All right, guys, ready? Here we go. Everybody ready? Well, only 16 of us are. Okay, good. Here we go. What should a school nurse ask a teacher about? The answers are bicycle safety, uh, financial stability, relationship questions, or obesity. Yeah. Beautiful. Anybody tell me why we're going to ask about relationship questions. We can open up and talk about sex. Say that again. So we can open up the to begin to talk about um, sexual safety. What are our adolescents most at risk for? Violence. Abuse. Mm -hmm. That's right. Violence in relationships. All right. Good there. We got most of them. All righty. Number two. What should a home health nurse do before a visit? Schedule a post-op visit, prepare for safety, have a friend with them, or do post-op visiting planning. Who's the planning? Beautiful. 
beautiful. One person said, do post that planning. Yeah, we should uh, do that, but that would be after our visit, right? So we're gonna prepare for safety. We are not going to have a friend with us, why? Patient privacy. Keep on privacy. Yep. You can't say, hey, you wanna come with me and visit my patient? Just like you wouldn't say to your friend, hey, you wanna come in the hospital and help me treat my patient? All right, good work, guys. What suggests a healthy family? Remember, this is from the book, not from Professor Aloni. Member who's present at all times, time spent together, a mom and a dad, or a three bedroom house. Beautiful. The two that answered a mother and a father, what I would tell you with that is absolutely that will never be an answer because we have to look at all our different types of families, right? When we're evaluating. Time spent together as unit, I don't think any of us would argue the more time spent together as a family can be beneficial. If you argue the entire time, then I don't think it would be very beneficial, but, but it's still time spent together. You trust, you feel that sense of community. Good work. All right, this is a true or false. Uh, well, we didn't really go into just too much detail on this. Just take a guess. Family as context. Those were the four pictures I told you about. Focuses only on the family. Good, that was a guess. So what I would tell you in that, if you had a question like this and you don't know the answer, family as context care. So that's telling you that it's not only gonna focus because there's care being given here. So you know when you're dealing with a family, you're not only dealing with the family as a family group, but you're dealing with every member of that family. Okay, so most of you got it right, good. Primary concern with infants. Vaccinations, obesity, abuse, or congenital defects. Whoa, look at that. That was split across the board. What I will tell you in our book, they emphasize congenital defects is something we really want to look at. Vaccinations, eh, yeah, good too. Obesity, definitely not because babies aren't usually hitting obesity. We look at obesity for school age children. Abuse is going to be our elder abuse. So congenital defects is really what we look at because that is going to really impact the way that family interacts with that infant, right? Vaccination's nice, but how is that gonna impact how the family is dealing or um, looking for things with the infant? Probably not much, right? All right. Primary concern for nurse with school age children, schoolwork, obesity, abuse, or location where the grandparents live. Very good. School aged is our keyword here. That's obesity. Abuse is going to be those teenagers, those older people, right? All righty. We didn't go over this, but this is in your reading. American Disability Act does what? Think about what this use context clues here to get your answer. Gives money to kids, protects the home, protects animals, protects discrimination acts with disabilities. Beautiful work. We didn't even talk about it. You guys are smart. See, it has the word disability right there and disability. I'm helping you here for your exam, right? What are following things that are going to impact a family's Health assessment, time and place, lifestyle and gender, family size, or genetics and age.
Okay, when we are doing a family assessment, remember what is that thing we do to look at a family's health assessment? Starts with a G. And on our genograms, we're gonna be looking at what conditions they had and how old they were. Okay, four was lifestyle and gender. Like, good to know, lifestyle and gender, but that's not gonna tell us much about our family's health assessment, right? Ooh, good one. Form of primary prevention with school nurses. Substance abuse prevention, treating medically complex children, giving daily meds, or identifying abuse. Primary. Ooh, Corva said abuse. Mm, abuse is going to be, it's already happened. We can't prevent it if it's already happened, right? So that's why identifying abuse wouldn't be. I know we're running like a two minutes over, but we're almost done. And I want to get you through these questions because I will tell you it will help you. Children are not impacted by their family's wealth and well-being. True or false? Beautiful. Kids are most impacted by employment when they see parents' employment and economics. They know when they don't have enough money to buy things and how much stress that is. Who's part of our vulnerable population? Mentally stable children, migrant workers, or students? No, 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 no. Oh, I think she's wrong. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Very good. Mentally unstable would have been our answer there. Migrant workers. No. Very good. good, good, good. One more question. Major concern for our elderly obesity, abuse, alcoholism, illegal drug use. Major is our key word here. Good work, abuse. Remember in this question, if this were on a test, which it's not gonna be worded like this necessarily, but obesity, alcoholism, and illegal drug use, for sure the elderly can partake in that. But our key thing we're gonna be investigating is going to be, is going to be our abuse for them, okay? All right, guys, so that brings us to the end. I want you to review chapter 20 a bit, you know, um, Good information to know. I am going to ask everyone to stay on except for the following. Oh, we want to look at what we have due this week. Hold on. We'll do that real quick. I have to change my test date too. Okay, no worries. So you're going to stay on with me too. All right, here we go. Here is our week in review. We have our exam. Everyone knows it is not Thursday because Professor Aloni is not available. So we are doing Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as our general rule of thumb here. We have case study healthy people 2030. Okay. This is going to be a group project. You guys have been assigned it, correct? Everyone knows their case study. Okay. So whoever you are, you know what you're going to do there. How many pages, Professor? Let's look at our rubric here. Um, oh, pages on this one? Oh, I'm not going to give you pages. What I would suggest is that you guys get... Um, um, get everything in here. You know, do the best you can on that one. Get all the content in there. I'm not going to give you pages. Okay. And then we have our live, le live lecture, which we know is due tomorrow. Okay. And then, then on our... Aren't we in week two? No, we're heading into week three. 
okay. We're heading in, right? Week two is this week, which I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. You are correct, but I'm sort of going ahead because we're going to have to have all this stuff done. But you have a discussion question due that was due tonight. I saw everyone did it. Thank you very much. You had an end clutch review questions. You're going to know how to do that. Any questions on that? Do Sunday and at a station. Uh, what I will tell you about week three is we are not going to meet week three. So I want you to know what you have due week three. Okay. Sorry, I have to head. See that? I'm jumping ahead already. All right, so discussion question. Everybody did it for Wednesday. You're going to respond to two of your classmates by Sunday. NCLEX do Sunday. And exam is going to be this upcoming week. And we are going to make sure we do our case study with our groups for next week. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you're taking it on Friday in the morning, upload it on Wednesday. First, and I want everybody uploaded by Thursday morning anyway. I don't, it doesn't matter to me when you're taking the test. Okay. okay. Okay, so the only people I'm going to dismiss at this point, and I know we're late, guys, and I don't like to stay late because I know you've had a long day as of I, but we have to finish up some, you know, I call it administrative work. All right, so Rachel, bye. Have a good week. Uh, Daylin, good week. Marissa, good week. Larissa, good week. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions, feel free to contact me, okay? Uh, Redder? Have a yes, good week. Rose Angel, have a good week. Sharon, see ya. Joe. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, everybody else needs to stay with me. All right, so out of our group who is here, raise your hand, like don't raise it, or you can raise it like this, I don't care, or raise it with the little hand thingy. Um, let me know if you want to come Saturday at 3 p.m. What's the other option? Okay, so I will. Do you guys want the other options first? Yeah. I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? I didn't hear the question. No worries. The question was who wants to come Saturday? But here, I'm going to share a screen with you. Okay, can everyone see this screen? Your choices are Monday 1 to 3, Thursday 9 to 11, Friday 9 to 11, Friday 8 to 10 p.m., Tuesday 9 to 11, Wednesday 3 to 5. Friday, 9 to 11. And you can join in on Dr. Lundy too. She's Tuesday, 9 to 11 or Wednesday, 3 to 5. The only one I do not want you to join in with is uh, Dr. Sokowski because she's had a full big class. So I'm letting you look at that. Your other choice is Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Is this for class? No, no. What is this for? Does everybody know? Yeah, our, our exam. 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 The exam. You know what? I may have you guys attend one of these for class because there's content I want to cover. Mm, let me think about it. But th this is for the exam. Can I do Friday 8 to 10? Sure. Who was that? Rachel Gonzalez. Friday, 8 to 10? Yes. 8 to 10 p.m., right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. I can do Friday, 9 to 11. Okay, let me write these down. D'Amber says Friday, 9 to 11. Yes. Okay, if you're good, D'Amber, adios. Have a good week. See you later. Have a good Bye -bye. trip. All right, Angie, you're going to yeah. come Saturday? Yes, ma'am, please. Yeah. Okay, hold on, let me write you down. Angie's coming Saturday. Okay, who else do I have on my chat here? If we do Kayla, Saturday. Saturday. Saturday as well. All right, Kayla, I'll see you Saturday. Guys, don't miss Saturday okay, because I can't do any makeups if you don't come Saturday. I'll be there. Okay. Bye, Angela. Bye, Kayla. This All is right. Dawana. I will come in on Saturday as well because the other times I know that's work and Friday night. Ooh, I'll, I'll choose Saturday. All right, you on Saturday? Okay, 3 p.m. our Zoom time, okay? I mean, our Zoom thingy. Is this coming Saturday? No, this coming Saturday is our, uh, this coming Friday is our review. Our exam is next week. 
It should be next Thursday, but it's going to be next Saturday. Okay, uh, can you include me in the Saturday? Sure, Margarita. Thank you. <clears throat> I was originally down for Friday, but come Saturday, because I have clinical. Okay, hold on, let me put you in on Saturday. Uh, where can I find you? Oh, you're in for Friday, you're gonna do Saturday, okay. Lani. Yeah. yeah. Professor Lani, if yeah. things change and I'm able to make Friday 8 to 10, can I just jump in and have everything ready? You can't because I have to give her your name and okay. code. Okay. Okay. But if you want to do Friday and something happens, you know, like Friday at, you know, if it's coming close to the time and you want to do it, text me and I'll get in touch with her. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. You have my cell phone. So text me. Don't email me because I can't okay. guarantee I'll get it. Yeah. I'll, I'll text this time. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. All right, guys. What are we looking at? Let's go. Williams. Um, are you here? There you are. What do you want to pick? I'm thinking into okay, this I'll come back to you. Don't worry. pack of clusters. Don't worry. I'm and looking at, my camera. Camera. at the spaces. I know it's a lot of <laughs> slots and stuff. Andrea, what do you think? I'm going to do Saturday. Saturday? Yeah. Okay, guys who are picking Saturday, I'm reminding you, if you don't make Saturday, I cannot reschedule. Okay? okay. So be, I'll there be there Saturday. I'll see you Saturday, Andrea. Did you get mine? Nope. Marissa, yeah, I got you. Okay. You're coming Saturday, you think. Bye, Marissa. Mm, anybody else have a decision? Albert, you have a decision? I can I do say, Saturday. Yeah, Wednesday for me, please. <clears throat> Wednesday, what time? Uh, 3 p.m. Okay, so that's the Wednesday before our class. You know that, right? The day before our Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Um, what I may have you guys do is join a Zoom for that class, but I don't know if they're going to do a class after the exam. Eh, I'll probably just record one for next week. Okay. Anyway, uh, Good to go did, did you pick me? Friday night to 11. Williams, Friday night to uh, Friday 11 a.m. If anything changes, I will call you right away. Okay. So it's Friday. It's a.m. You know that. Uh-huh. Let me put you down. Friday, 9 to 11. Okay, have a good night. Uh, any of my other people? Luce is going to do Saturday. Luce is going to do Saturday. Okay. Um, so, where are you? Saturday, great. Okay. Hi, Luce. Okay, Christy, you went Saturday? Yeah, that's okay. Fine. Okay, I'll see you then. All right. Uh, bye, Christy. Go ahead, Claudia, Lauren, anybody, Felicia? Can I do Wednesday, Dr. Lundy's? Sure. Three to five, I think. Yeah. Wednesday, three to five. Okay, gotcha. All right, good luck. Oh, I need you have What'd you say, Lauren? Oh, you got to sign. I have to sign your group. They're on it. Hold on. <laughs> Go ahead, Claudia. I'll do Friday at nine in the morning. Friday at nine. Okay. Keep an eye out for your Zoom link. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. Thanks. Felicia. Saturday. So everyone was talking and I. It, I can't. <laughs> I know. I know. It's too much. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. I'll see you Saturday. Thank you. Okay. Bye. All right, Lauren, let's take a look at that group of the group that I have set up. Let me just hold on one second. I'll pull it up. Yeah, see, I'll wait till everybody's gone. Now I can talk without being talked over. <laughs> I know it's really hard, isn't it? Because everybody talks at once and I like people to contribute, but, and sometimes the chat doesn't work because people don't like to get into there. So it's like a whole I don't type fast enough. <laughs> I'll give more time. How about that? Should I give more time in the chat? All right. You have a choice to go in with. Let me see which campus they are. I don't really go on campus. I ended up with two online classes and I did my Sims already. So I don't really mind doing it online. When I did okay. it the first time, I did it online. All right. So I'm going to put you then with this group and it's going to be. 
they are out of, hold on. Uh, well, I don't even know where they're out of, but uh, hold on. I know you don't care. What I'm telling you is one of their people in their group, I don't think is in our class. So okay, it's going to help fine. you because you can just join right in. I'm going to put into the um, chat right here for you um, their name and their emails. And that way you can reach out to them. I will send an email to all three of you tonight. Okay. And it'll say you have a new, uh, you have a new team member. Okay. And then I also got an email from you about reviews. Does yes, because I think, help? well, so I think, and correct me if I'm wrong here, are you an at-risk student? What would be, what is an at-risk student? Just Okay, at-risk means that you have not passed the class recently. Yeah, I did. I failed last semester. I failed this class. And it, it's funny because I was doing fine. And then the last exam, I had three of them. Yeah. I know. It so was that, that, that week where we had no school on Monday. So I ended up with the peds, community, and med surge all in the same week. Oh, gosh. I know. I know a lot of the students got really had a tough time. Um, what I will tell you, your best bet here is do this have reviews with me before the exams. So okay. pick a time when you and I can get together. It'll be probably just like 30 minutes. And that mm -hmm. way we'll go over that review sheet and I will tell you what to study. I also want you to make sure you stay up on your assignments because I will tell you right now that some of the students failed last quarter because they didn't stay up on the assignments. You don't think they matter, but they do. Oh, no, I always had them in. I turned everything in. So my, my issue, my only issue that I ever seem to have is the replies. I get everything in Wednesday and then the replies just... You forget. I don't know. I forget. <laughs> the worst case right, put, is a, put a reminder in your phone, okay? So when you, you know post that on a... Wednesday, you put a reminder in your phone for Friday, Saturday, respond by Sunday. You know what I mean? Yeah. The um the canvas has a to-do list and I have yeah. it on notification. So it sits there with a big bubble with how many things I need to do. <laughs> and I, once I do the discussion, it counts it as done. So the right. replies. I know. They don't alert you. Um, I did get everything done already. I went ahead and I sent you the discussion. I went ahead and I did the um, project. Can't think of what it's called. I'm not used to night classes, by the way. I'm a yeah, day student. Yeah, I know. I know I'm it's hard sure. too, right? Aren't you tired? And then I'm in Eastern time, so it's 10, 10 20. Well, I know it now. is. You're ready for bed. Oh, uh, yeah. What right was the project point. that I had to do? Uh, which one? The uh, week case one. study? That's a group project that you're doing. No, what a project did you do already? The group, oh, the, the plan. Developmental yeah, the developmental plan. plan. I, I had gotten a zero on it and I, I, I just turned it in. I turned it all in yesterday. All right, so be careful on late stuff. Send me emails, okay? Yeah, it was because of the way that I was put in. It's funny, I was put in your roster as you were grading. So oh. it looked like I didn't do it. Okay. Don't but worry. I had just gotten in your roster. All right, don't worry. So I will uh, not deduct points, but um, make yeah, sure so the development plan and the, the live access attestation for week one, I already turned those in. Okay. And then for week two, I already did the discussion question. I need to do the two replies and I did the um, the NCLEX review questions. I already did all that. Yeah, okay, good. Did you get 50? Because sometimes when you're repeating, you have to click on use not only new questions or something. Did you get 50 yeah, questions? No, it, it's new questions only. So don't do new questions only because you have to get 50. Yeah. So if you so do new questions, okay. Because sometimes if yeah, you don't I do it until I get to 50. Question, all right. Well, as long as you got 50, I don't care. Right. Yeah. So we're good. <laughs> all right. So you're going to be with uh, Luce and Sharon. Their emails are in the chat right there. I'm going to send an email right now as you and I are chatting so I don't forget. And I'm just going to say, hello, we have a new member. Please let me know if you don't hear that. One girl in the group, I haven't heard from her and she hasn't been to any class. So I'm assuming she's not going to be in with us. So I'm adding you to that group. If she at some point does join on, then you guys will have four people. But I, I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. <laughs> we're on week two, you know what I mean? So I feel like. We would have heard something. Okay, so you're with 
Luz and who else? Sharon. Okay, so I'm sending you guys an email if I could find my email. Okay. Sharon. Um, okay. Group project. How do I know which group? Hold on, I'll tell you in a minute. I can see it. Uh, group E. Okay. So group E is case 33. Yeah. So what I would do is I have um, access to everybody's phone number, but I don't give out phone numbers unless you guys authorize it. So do you want me to give them your phone number? That's fine. Yes. All right. So what's your cell phone number? It's 305. Hold on one second. Go ahead. 305. Five six two six two nine four five five and text okay. only because the phone calls won't go through. Yeah, I will. I'll put text only. I just found texting is better sometimes. Okay, so I just put Lauren cell phone text only will be joining you. Okay, I'm sending you guys okay. an email right now. All right, any other questions? No, that's everything. All right, we have a scheduled test, right? Here, I just want to make sure. Yeah, I'm Wednesday with Dr. Lundy. Dr. Lundy. Did you have Dr. Lundy last quarter? Yes, I did. And I'll go ahead and I will watch at least two reviews. It's what I try to do for the uh Yeah, exam. please do that. It'll be really good for you to go through the reviews. Okay. And if we can, I guess if I'm meeting her at three, meet you at 2 30 on Wednesday before the exam or Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, let's do Tuesday. Let me look at my calendar, but let's do Tuesday. I'll I'll do it at my lunch hour. So let's do Tuesday, the 19th. At what time? When's your lunch hour? Uh, well, it's 1230 my time, but I can go early or late. It doesn't matter. What's good for you? 1230 your time would be what time for me? 230. 230, that's fine. Okay, let's do 1230 my time. Okay, and so we'll do it on our Zoom, okay? And print out the study guide. 2.30 p.m. Okay. And if you don't see me on there, just send me a text, okay? Sounds good. Sometimes I get behind at work or ahead at work. I don't know what you call it, but busy at work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you so much. All righty, take care. You too. Okay, bye. Bye.